Hey folks, Luxinda Swirl here. We are going to start another wrapping the cup project today. This time I am going to wrap a 20 ounce skinny straight. I get these from Craft Haven. I use the straights specifically for wrapping because there is no taper. You don't have to warp your image or deal with a, a slant as you wrap things around. In, in theory, I mean, if I have to start straight, but if I start my wrap straight, then it should go all the way around straight. <laughs> we'll see how I do with that today. I have printed out this lovely pattern from, uh, actually this is from 143vinyl.com. It's a pattern in their free pattern library that I copied over, brought it up in my Cricut design space and turned it into a uh, full full page for Cricut anyway, print then cut. So that means it is uh, 9.25 inches long by 6.75 inches tall, which will not quite, unfortunately, fit around a tumbler. There will be a gap, but usually when I do wraps, I, I take some of the material off at the top and the bottom anyway. And that is why I've spray painted the top and the bottom of this black already in preparation. Um, again, this, this could all go wonky very, very quickly. But anyway, I want it to be like this. Here's the top of the cup. All the books and the potion bottles and the feathers and everything else are, are going up. And then we will have a graphic on it that will be sort of Harry Potter-ish, because I figure with all the owls and the potion bottles, this is probably a magician's library. So, first things first, I, got, I have my prep tumbler. I wanna get the vinyl onto the tumbler. I'm a little nervous about this, because as I say, if I don't do it straight in the very beginning, it's gonna go wonky very fast by the time I get to the other side. Uh, but honestly, at that point, if that happens, I pull this off, it will rip. I, I get one shot with printable vinyl. Pull it off, print out another piece, try it again. But I'm really hoping it works it works the first time. That would be that would be ideal. I made a very faint line where I want to line up my edge. And again, this is up. So my edge will be here. And I'm going to start by peeling off or peeling back just a little bit. I just want to expose a little bit. So this is all I'm working with in the beginning. Hopefully you can see this. And I am going to endeavor to get this lined up as straight as I possibly can uh, and as evenly as I possibly can top to bottom although that doesn't matter as much as long as it's even going around. Okay, this looks right, but you know, I think that looks pretty good. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. So I'm gonna start by pressing that down. And now, oops, wham. Let's just see. Let's just see how well we did. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Perfect would be these match up and these match up. It's not perfect, but God, it's awfully close. I wonder, let's see, where did I go wrong? So it needs to be, I wonder if I can. A little more this way. Let's see how that goes around. Oh yeah, spot on, all right. Okay, okay. This is good, I'm glad I checked. Now, we slowly peel out our backing paper and Push everything down flat, rub any bubbles or wrinkles out again, because you're working with a straight no taper cup. As long as you take it slow, this should work relatively simply. <laughs> 
is work with some oh gosh, work with some parchment paper. I could have used a smaller sheet, clearly, but it won't stick. What I'm hoping to do. More white knuckle, knuckle, more white knuckle. White knuckle art by the lazy artist. Let's see if that worked. Come on, out a girl, out a girl. Okay, now I don't want this piece to flop down before I'm ready. All right. All right, we are in business. Yay, hot diggity. That looks pretty darn good. Uh, I'm not going to put the graphics straight on the printable vinyl because again, that would be a one-shot deal. And if I even, even just a little bit set the vinyl down accidentally and then pull it back without even thinking, just sort of a jerk reaction, it would probably take the picture right off. Uh, and I don't want to do that. So the first thing that happens now is um, I'm going to spray sealer on it, the Rust-Oleum 2X Clear, and then I am going to put a layer of epoxy on it. And then it will be protected this far anyway, so that when I put a vinyl decal on it, the worst that can happen is the vinyl decal gets pulled off and I have to make another one. It won't hurt this much of the cup that we've done so far, which was painful enough the first time, right? Just to stay tuned. And we're back. All right, so here is our epoxied Potter-esque library, a magician's library, wrap it up tumbler. Um, I had <laughs> real bubble problems after I got the epoxy on. I hit it with a torch and I hit it with a torch and I hit it with a torch and I came back later and hit it with a torch and they're just bubbles galore. I chose to use KS Art Resin because I had another tumbler going at the same time that required a lot of time so that I could work on various parts of that technique. This was just a layer of epoxy resin that I was gonna put on and be done. Art resin has a lot of bubble issues unless you're mixing a lot of stuff into it, like a lot of glitter or a lot of alcohol ink. Uh, I didn't mix anything into this. I didn't even mix my Marabou Sparkles into this, the rainbow alcohol ink. So as a result, it had a ton of bubbles. So you can, you can see I've already been outside sanding it this morning because um, I just got some, I mean, it's like giant zits. But you know, again, my fault, I should have used the liquid stone because I get such better results with that. So lesson learned there. Now here is my graphic. I would like to put it opposite of the, the seam line, which really, really disappeared well. I've got a, got a good seam which uh, means that I did a pretty good job with my wrap. So that makes me happy. Now I found it once, it is visible if you look for, oh, there it is. You can see a little bit of, oh, can you see that? 
Let's see if I can focus on it. Let's see if I can get close up on it. Right there. That sort of white um, speckles going down the line there, that is, a, that is part of the seam where the uh, printed vinyl actually scraped off because I ran my fingernail down it to flatten in the seam out. So that's where the seam is. I'd like to put, I'd like to put the uh, decal opposite that. So we just put my finger, finger there, turn it over, and that brings us to this spot right here. Let's see, I'll do it. Do it as I always recommend, which is peel the backing paper off the vinyl. Seems to work better that way. Okay. We'll bring our cup back. Again, where's the seam? It's there. Okay. <sighs> yeah, right there. Right about there. Taco your your uh, transfer tape and let the middle fall. Make sure I'm doing this straight. Unfortunately, there are a lot of horizontal lines in this one, thanks to the bookshelves. Okay. And rub down the vinyl so you don't have any bubbles or wrinkles in the vinyl. Okay. And then we'll pull our back here, we'll pull our transfer tape off. And I pull it basically horizontal. There we go. You see that okay? Hope this is focusing. Okay, sorry if that wasn't in focus. I apologize. There we go. Oh, <laughs> look, the owl turns out right in the book. That's kind of cute. All right, so there it is. There's my decal. Just one more chapter. So this can be for book lovers, this can be for potter lovers, this can be for magic lovers, this can be for book of shadows lovers. It should appeal to anyone who likes a book for any reason. Okay, so now what happens is I put another layer of epoxy on it. This final layer will have Marabou alcohol ink the name of it is Rainbow, and it adds just sparkles, just a little bit of sparkle. I try to add something special to the bottom that pertains to the theme of the cut. So it's not a book, but it is a potter symbol. So anyway, I will put a layer of sparkly resin over the whole thing, and then I will bring, bring you back for the big reveal at the end. So stay tuned. <laughs>